Good evening and welcome to the number one morning show on Periscope for conservative talk and news. Welcome to the best closer show. This is Friday night and you're now joining Closing Time, episode number six. I'll be with you in one minute. Please swipe and invite. Welcome to, I think, episode number six of Closing Time. Good to see everyone. Hello, Huey. How's everyone doing this Friday evening? Friday evening for me, anyway. Some of you, it's into Saturday down under, and some of you, it's still uh, work time on Friday. Good to see you all. Welcome to Closing Time. We had a good show this morning. I had an awesome time. We had quite the week once again. How's everyone doing? Hope you're doing well. I saw all your awesome comments. Hey, Gus, it's late for you. Good to see you. Hello, Harper. I saw your comments. Hello, Shady. How you been? Hello. Good to see you, too. Hello, Dave. Francis. Nice to see you, Jody. Good to see you. Hey, Mike. Maga Rose. Much Maga. Thank you for the great comments. I saw those. Thank you for the super hearts. I saw those, too. Thank you, Sharon. Democratic Rep. How you doing? Blair. National. Good evening. Autumn. Casey. Thank you very much. It actually has running water behind me. You just can't see it. You see it now? You see the fountain in front of the White House? There's the fountain right there. You see it? I'm blocking the fountain. All right. Hello, Tess. Hello, Harper. Thank you for the super hearts. All right. So what we do on closing time as people come in is we first go over a quick summary of the week of news at a glance for some of you that missed my morning show. It's already 8 a.m. You're in the future, Gus. Good to see you. Nice to see you again. Hello, Rosanna. All right, so we do that. Then I have a little bit of a rant, and then we're going to do some Q&A. How does that sound? Does that sound pretty good? Hello. Well, thank you, Sylvia. I'm sure I'll get an alert on that. Thank you for doing so. I'm sure I'll get an alert. I got an alert. Thank you very much, Sylvia. Very kind of you. Hello, Wayne. Guzman. How you feeling, buddy? All right. So we're going to do, let's see. Yeah, let's give everyone one more minute and then I'll do a week's glance at the news. <laughs> no problem. House of Man. Hey, Ulysses, how you been? Much MAGA, good to see you. Excellent evening. Thank you, Dave. You guys ready for a nice evening tonight? Early voting is looking very good. I have some more updates on that. We're going to touch on that tonight. We have uh, updated information from Real Clear Politics of updated polling. How good is it? I would say it's about 85% fat-free, I think is pretty good. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure. As I've been discussing the Fed for three months, we're very close to having enough seats on the board on the Fed to be able to abolish the Fed and go back to the gold standard, something uh, we should consider as a country very soon. President Trump's very confident about that. What did I tell you about the market today? Thank you, Jane. How'd the market do today, guys? Do all right? All right. I told you not to freak out. Hello, Lisa. I gave you guys a rendition of what happened with the market. I told you the day before it was going to happen, and uh, it did happen, and now it's back. Just like I said, you guys can't freak out. Uh, today, the uh, earnings reports came out for four banks, and that's what made the difference in the market today. So, uh, And that was going to come. And a lot of older people invested in certificates of deposit. And those that uh, put money in safe places is a safe bet, which gives the bank safe money to invest, thus changing the marketplace. And I'm no genius at investing. I only have a few stocks. I'm just telling you, I saw that coming. We still have our gold. Uh, a lot of you were fearing that our gold is gone from Fort Knox. And there's been rumors that our gold is gone. As far as I know, it's still here. That's all I can say. 
All right, why don't we get started? Let's get started, and then let's do a week's version of the news, and then we'll get into a rant I want to talk about first, and then we'll do some Q&A about whatever you like, because we have to fit a lot in this hour, so let me do a speed read of that, of the news. Are you guys ready for that? We're going to do a speed read of the news, if you guys are ready. Thank you. Thank you, Shady. I appreciate that. We've also had some awesome broadcasts and awesome guests I've been very fortunate to get guests like Anne Marie Waters on my show, Shiva, uh, Joy, Ray, many other great folks on the show. I had Diane today on the show. Very fortunate here. We broke a million. We're breaking records. And we have a lot more to come before the election. So let's get started, all right? Thank you, Dr. Tony, for the super hearts. Let's get started, okay? I can't wait. I'm ready. Here we go. You guys ready? First, I want to give a shout out and thank you. Two reasons to Laura Loomer tonight. First, Laura Loomer watched my broadcast last Friday with Anne Marie Waters, and now she's following me. I'm proud to say I did send her a note, and I have not heard back yet, but I'd love to get Laura Loomer on the show. That's Hey, Scott, thank you, buddy. First, uh, she watched that episode. That made me happy. Second, Laura Loomer just was successful in devastating Keith Ellison. I want you to give it up for Laura Loomer. Keith Ellison booked an event to raise money. You know, the woman beater, Keith Ellison. He booked an event at Wooden Hill Brewing Company, and uh, Laura Loomer made some phone calls to Wooden Hill Brewing Company about the woman beater, and uh, at the last minute, Wooden Hill Brewing Company backed out of the event. You can give it up. They've just been loomered, and Laura Loomer is famous for that now. That's the new thing you see. It's called loomered. So when you get uh, devastated like that, it's called loomered. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Miss Pearl. Congratulations. She's fantastic. Uh, by the way, we make calls like that, call to actions. Huey knows what I'm talking about. And Laura Loomer made it happen. Full kudos to her and her aggressive style. We need aggressive people out there to do things the way she's doing it. Much love to her. Hello, Tulip. All right. The, this is all, more good news about Keith Ellison. You ready for this? I'm sure Keith Ellison isn't going to like this very much. But three hours ago, the judge just ruled that they are going to release Keith Ellison's divorce records. I wonder what's in there. Hmm. Maybe a little smack? A little wife beating? A little woman beating? I'm saying whatever it is, I'm sure glad the judge agreed to release these records and I look forward to hearing more about them. Congratulations to you. I posted the story for you all to read on Twitter. Yes, I posted the story a few hours ago. That's right, Melissa. I posted that story. Thank you much, MAGA. All right. President Trump also agreed to, last night, to rally for McSally. I know that rhymes. I made that up. You can hashtag it, rally for McSally. President Trump will make a return visit as that race has, uh, that race has tightened up within two or three points. Rally for McSally in Arizona, where the dirtiest politics take place. Hashtag that. All right, you ready for this? Florida early voting. Florida, 47.1% for Republicans, and Democrats, 34.5%. Now, before you jump up and cheer, hey, John, before you jump up and cheer, it's still a good sign. It's a good voting indicator. That tells me a lot of the overseas um, people in the military voted and a lot of elderly vote in early voting uh, via mail-in ballots in many forms. It, thank you much, Mega. This is a good, uh, a good indicator that things are going very well in Florida. You can't live off that, but I just wanted to give you a shout out there. Rally for McSally. All right. Last night, which was very critical and not reported at all on opposition media, which is all news, all news, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, NBC, CBS, including everybody. Nobody reported until I did that 15 judges were fast-tracked and approved three circuit court judges, 12 district judges. And the best part about these judges is that they're all lifetime appointments. Can you give it up for that? Lifetime appointments. That means the left can do nothing about it. Lifetime appointments like Kavanaugh. You're welcome. Hey, Sean, Deep, Deep Southern. Lifetime appointments. All right. As I announced this morning, I think it take, took the news a little bit extra time. So forgive the news for being late. But this morning, I was one of the first proud to announce that President Trump had secured Pastor Brunson, but they couldn't say anything until late in the evening. But I went ahead and announced it early this morning, as you all saw. 
So Pastor Brunson will probably get a health check and be right on his way home right quick. And President Trump did tweet about that uh, a few hours ago. Hello, Lynette. Thank you. Appreciate that, John. Hey, John. Two Johns in the room. All right. Thanks, Tile Man. I'm full of good news today. I can't help it, guys. I can't help it. But my rant is really, uh, I, I really got to get into this rant here shortly. All right. The market did exactly what I said. You had two days of a correction. During that two days, um, when interest rates rise, we can't live on zero. We had eight years of zero. And with these incremental quarter and half percent interest rises, that allowed CDs to become available at two to three percent with online banking. Online banking was flooded with a bunch of uh, investments in safe money CDs. That built the market back up, allowed the fourth order, the, the quarter earnings reports to come out for four major banks. And thus, you saw an increase and a correction, and we're back to business. And that had to happen because we are right now going through interest rate ri raises while we're still gaining steam, while all economic indicators are a full go. If this happened during a zero interest rate, and then you saw a market correction that strong, you would have a market crash. So actually, having the rate raises is not a bad thing, which means your money can make money in safe places. And if some of you are conservative investors, no problem. Either way, it's still good news. Still good news. Jump out and back in if it freezes because my monitor shows it as good to go. Okay? So on my monitor, I can see it. It's still good so far. Don't curse it now. Okay. Kanye made a visit to the White House. First couple things. Never a fan of Kanye. Didn't really care much about him or for him. But what I do appreciate is someone who speaks their mind and he speaks his mind and he broke the black glass ceiling and because he broke it he allowed people like candace owens to step out he allowed many others to step out that are have freed themselves of the rope and chains provided by barack and saint obama and i'm proud to announce because of what he's done that's opened up the doors to over 300,000 people leaving and going away and running away and getting the hell out with the walk away uh, campaign, walkawaymarch.com. I'm also proud to announce we've raised quite a bit of money for the walk away march. And I want to thank all of you because of my show who donated. I'm very proud that you guys did that. In fact, some of you were quite generous and spent some time with me offline with my time. I gave up free consulting to people that uh, donated over $50. And I've already had a few good chats. So it was my pleasure to work with you guys. All right. On top of that, he actually had some good ideas. Can we just say some good ideas? Let me go over the good ideas. Bring in manufacturing back to Chicago and giving people a place to be trained and understand and work with machinery and equipment. I love that. Another idea, having a block manager or a block leader. Yes, Ulysses, it's a really great day, buddy. Really great day. I loved his idea about having a block manager for every block in the inner city. You have one family, one person, potentially one man lead the block. And that person's in charge of getting everyone together for A, neighborhood watch, B, beautification of the block, C, getting parents involved in their kids. Like if one parent can't make it home, another parent takes over, picks up that kid, makes sure that that kid does homework, brings them back to a safe place, makes sure they get food and all that kind of stuff. I got to tell you, it's not a bad idea. Hey, Victor. It costs absolutely nothing. Hey, Karen, it costs nothing. Hello, Delilah, costs nothing. And so I, I thought that's an intriguing idea. And I really think that it takes a full a group of everyone to make it work. I also want to include that we should get inner city policing to take place again. We should have police officers show up, get to know the people in the neighborhood by name, and start participating in those group meetings with the block managers. That would be one way to connect the police with the community so they don't think the police are targeting people, which they're not, and the demographics tell you they're not. So I would like to add a piece to that puzzle and have police be part of it. Hello, Marilyn. I love to have police be part of this because inner city policing sometimes is, is you know contentious. And I think we could break those bonds rather quickly with a few interesting meetings and we should be able to fix that. I love that idea. Um, yeah, it's the way he speaks sometimes can get at people. At the same time, I want authenticity. And hey, Beth, I got authenticity from President Trump. I got authenticity from Kanye. 
and I'd rather show me all of you, regardless if I like it or not, than some of you. So I'm good with what I saw. And I'm happy to say that he has 30 or 40 million people that listen to what he says. And if he could cause another 100,000 people to walk away because he believes in uh, 2A and having a gun, he was proud enough to shout out that it's illegal guns that are the problem. That really made a difference in the narrative quite a bit. So I'm proud of that. So I have to say kudos to you, Kanye. I may not have appreciated you before, but I appreciate your authenticity and you had your second meeting with this president. And not many people can say that. So congratulations to you. Really deserved. Hello, Burning Trip. Okay, where else was I here? All right, sad day for Ainsley Earhart. As I reported a couple days ago, she announced a separation from her husband because she, she's on Fox and Friends, so I have to report it. And her husband cheated on her. Shame on him. Guys can suck sometimes. Absolutely suck. And he filed for divorce. She took off her wedding ring. She was not wearing it on the show. And recently it was her birthday. And then I believe maybe it was her dad's or vice versa. Her dad called in on her birthday. So sad days for Ainsley Earhart. But she says, just respect her family and um, show her some love. So if you know who that is from Fox and Friends, give her some love there. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hey, Cherry. So yes. All right, where else am I here? All right, we had another great uh, ruling. The Supreme Court of this United States with Judge Kavanaugh, but he did not rule in this case. The Supreme Court of the United States allows voter ID in North Dakota. Hey, good to see you. Hey, Richard. Uh, so now voter ID is now required in North Dakota. They overruled the North Dakota Supreme Court. So give it up for the Supreme Court. They made something good happen. Uh, Avenatti, Avenetti, I hate giving him press, uh, challenges Don Jr. to a mixed martial arts fight. So my solution to that is this. If there is not real news regarding this guy, Avenatti, who thinks he's running for president, I say we stop giving the creepy porn lawyer any attention any longer for any reason. What do you guys think? No more attention to this attention whore. That's it. If he gets more than half percent of vote, I would be shocked on any day whatsoever. It should be a national law. You're right. Hey, four wheel should be a national law. All right. Nikki Haley resigned. Now, you know my thoughts on Nikki Haley. I'll say it one more time. I was very, 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 very disappointed in Nikki Haley. She was a decent governor. And when they had the church shooting, she made the biggest mistake of a lifetime. And for that, she will never be president. That's the reason. And you know what the reason is. She outlawed, basically, the Confederate flag. Confederate flags were no longer being sold in stores. They were taken out of stores. They were hard to find online. I'm not here to defend anything about the Confederacy. What I am here to tell you is that everybody in this room has a history. Everyone has a legacy. Everyone has great-great-grandparents who may have fought and died for what they believed in, including the Confederacy or the Confederate flag, which was a symbol to who they were. And it was not her decision to take it down. And it had zero to do with the church shooting. Zero. So that was an epic error to make as governor to make the shooting about a symbol. Big time. Hey, Nina. Uh, big time. I don't know if you guys remember that, but that's what happened. So I'm not a fan of Nikki. I believe she may be replaced by Richard Grinnell. I believe Gorka might be offered the position, but he would say no. Um, there's not many others. I would never have chosen Ivanka for that whatsoever, ever. That's not for her. Uh, I got to tell you, the better news would be President Trump announces that we're leaving the UN. We have funded the UN long enough. Hello, Susan. And I would have loved that decision to be better. Here's why I hate the UN. Why does the closer hate the UN? Because there are more than four dozen Muslim nations in the UN. And those four dozen nations in the UN stepped up to the microphone three months ago and said how much they hate the Jews and how much they are targeting the Jews. And no one else said anything. Nikki Haley actually got up and walked out of the meeting. I played the meeting, some of it, for you on my show. And some of the things they said, I would have immediately canceled my check to the UN and gotten the hell out of there. I would have nothing to do with the UN whatsoever. We honor the, the Jewish people. We honor the Jewish state. We got the Saudis to honor the Jewish state. And the fact that they took the time to step up to a microphone and curse the Jews while the Jews were sitting in there, that's a problem. 
and yet we're still part of the UN. Thank you, Nina, for coming in. I appreciate that. We're all part of the, you know, we shouldn't be part of it anymore. We should be getting the hell out of there. I would prefer that decision over the decision of worrying about Nikki Haley. Just a thought there. Thanks for the super hearts. All right, let's move on. I got lots more to talk about. As this guy has been telling you the real news on North Korea, you've been lied to on a daily basis by everyone. Okay? Behind the scenes, I posted the satellite images of what's been going on. The original deal broker between Mike Pompeo, President Trump, and Kim Jong-un stated that they are allowed to continue to make weapons, but not nuclear weapons and not enriching uranium. And why are they allowed to make weapons? Because they're allowed to make weapons because every country is allowed to defend themselves. So the deal was that they would start to dismantle two nuclear bases of the nine nuclear bases we believe they have. And that's been happening for now almost three months. Almost. They are beginning mid-dismantle. In the second meeting, Mike Pompeo went back and they've agreed to let our people, South Korean people, Japanese people, Chinese people, and Russian people be part of watching the utter dismantle of every single nuclear base under our auspices. We are in charge. Why is it going so well? Because for the first time, they have a zero GDP. That means they are worth nothing, have nothing, have no money in the banks, and there are no financial transactions able to take place. At this point, he wants a piece of the green, and all he has to do is look across the, the road and see South Korea's economy and go, damn, who built that? And they're going to say, the United States built that because we did build that. That's what we do. We take every place we destroy and we employ. We devastated Japan and Japan's a powerhouse. We devastated South Korea. South Korea is a powerhouse. And now we have North Korea, which could have been devastated. Just so you understand, hey, Eric, 1% uh, of GDP is 2.7 to 2.9 trillion dollars. And if we could give them 1% of GDP in the first three years, their economy will be crazy good. The people will be able to eat. They will be employed. And then if they get the Olympics awarded in 2032, they will be allowed with money given to them to start building an infrastructure, including roads and freeways and stadiums and all that other stuff, hotels, that they're gonna need to support what I just said. So things are going to come together for North Korea. And I don't think there'll ever be Korea. I think there'll be co-leadership and people will be able to see their relatives for the first time in the next few months where they haven't seen in over six decades. The only way you can see your relative across the border now is in a lottery system for a short period of time. So great stuff is going on. Great stuff. All right, let's continue. I know I have more. I always have more. All right. Uh, Anthony Weiner, I hate reporting this, has been a model citizen in prison. He has not been with underage boys or girls in prison because there's no opportunity. But he hasn't been. And apparently he's been a model, model prisoner. And because he's a model prisoner, they so far are going to let him out early in May of 2019. So that's pretty bad. He has a bargaining chip. He knows what's on the laptop like we do. And he could have played that card and he never did. Oh well. So I hate reporting that story, gang. I really do. Okay. Laura Ingram misreported something this week. I'm not a fan of, of Laura Ingram. But she allowed on her screen at the bottom, it's her show, at the bottom of her screen, it said that they will not be declassifying the documents in FISA that President Trump wants. That is a lie. President Trump has already seen them, so already that's a lie. So uh, that's, that is going to happen. Regardless if you and I see them or not, that is happening. Period. Okay. I'm not a fan. Bill and Hillary uh, are beginning their Me Too tour. Uh, pink pussy hats and all that for $745 a ticket. Feel free to jump in. Um, you'll get to see a racist and a rapist live on stage. So if you'd like to see that live and in person, it's $745 for a racist and a rapist together on tour. You know? So that should be interesting. You guys should check that out. All right, next. Kavanaugh is the first Supreme Court justice to hire all women clerks. He surrounds himself with women, coaches women basketball, has employed women at the highest levels, and at some point will be known to have uh, put on the bench more female judges than anyone. Let's give it up for an awesome week of Judge Kavanaugh. 
Justice Kavanaugh. What a great week. Well deserved. Congratulations. Hello, B. Norman. I'm trying. It's a Friday evening. It's a Friday evening. Bill will probably wear the hat. I feel like he'll wear the hat. I think that we should get some of his rape victims uh, and we should buy tickets for some of the rape victims and get them in the front row of some of these locations. And by the way, Laura Loomer is promising to interrupt their tour. And I give her credit if she does. So let's make sure we get some of the rape victims funded to go uh, and find them on the tour. All right, that would be fantastic. I would be uh, proud to see that. All right, my uh, shout out of the last two weeks goes to the same person. Who do you think my shout out is going to go to? Who deserves the greatest honor in the last two weeks besides Judge Kavanaugh, which I already honored? Thank you, Nanette. Appreciate that. It's a real green screen. Look, there's water. See the water? Right there. Right there. There it is. Okay. Who deserves the greatest honor of the last two weeks? Let's see if you guys have it. Who gets the honor? Lindsey Graham, Beth said. That is correct. Why does Lindsey Graham get the honor? First, Lindsey Graham was the first one to break the Republican glass ceiling. He spoke up. He stood up with an actual spine. He proved himself. After McCain died, he befriended President Trump and he went all in for his career. He is trying to go for something else. And I give him credit because when you want something in life, you got to get after it. Now, the left is shaming him for being gay. Shame on the left. He's never made that a part of his platform. He's never talked about it in public, but one time about maybe 12, 15 years ago. And they're trying to shame him now, saying we're propping him up as a gay person in this position. Shame on them. He chose to do it himself. Grassley did stand tall for sure, John. Not only did he do that, he took it up a notch. And guess what? He's going on the Lindsey Graham Smackdown tour. And Lindsey Graham is going to be traveling state to state in the purple states like Minnesota. And he's going to let people know the truth. There's no Russian collusion. What President Trump has accomplished will never and has never been done in American or world history in the shortest span. He is going to give the epic smackdown of what people did to Judge Kavanaugh, what they tried to do to this man. I give him a lot of credit for doing what he's doing. So what I have asked of everybody, I asked all of you today to do the closer a favor. Yes, Richard. I asked you all to do the closer a favor. What did I say? I asked you all to call your congressmen and your senators and ask them to have a Lindsey Graham moment. I want them to flood ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, and Fox and call and say they have intel and get on the air. And when they get on the air, they have a normal chat. And in the middle of the chat, they become the damn story. And I want to flip the script on all of the idiots out there and have everyone that doesn't have a spine and everyone that doesn't have a name in the house and everyone that doesn't have a name as a senator and get out there and shock the system and point at that reporter and say, I'd like to say something. What would you like to say, sir? Well, I'd like to add something. Shame on you for what you did to Judge Kavanaugh. You demonized the man. He was guilty until proven innocent. You scared the hell out of their daughters. They ended up with death threats. And you did this to a man that has one of the cleanest records six or seven times over. Shame on you and shame on your network and become the damn story. And the moment they become the story, we have officially Saul Alinsky them. We have polarized them the way Saul Alinsky taught them to do to us. We didn't call them names. We didn't call them out that way. We shame them in the middle of the public. And guess who will become the story? When President Trump tells off a reporter, it is epic. And no one else can do that. But Lindsey Graham did it. I want everyone to have the same shot as Lindsey Graham. So pull up your big boy pants and get out there and have a Lindsey Graham moment and do it on the set in the middle of a normal chat. Stop the, stop the presses and let them have it. Let fly. If you do something like that, you're going to earn major respect from your constituents and chances are you have a chance of staying in your position. And if you don't do something like this, you may not have a good shot at staying in your position. But I want to see it. I want to feel the passion of all the money I've wasted on your salary sitting there in a suit misrepresenting the people in boots. The suits versus the boots never works out. Those of us in boots never feel represented by them in suits. Well, time's gots to end. And I want to see a difference 
ASAP. Thank you for the ones that made the calls. Oh, you're welcome, Marilyn. Or your pantyhose, Sylvia said. Pull them up. I want to see it. I want to feel it. And I want to shame them in the middle of a chat and stop it. And I'm going to tell you why when I get to my rant. That was not my rant. Maisie would be easy to take down. Maisie tried to shame all men. You know, some men do suck. I'm not going to tell you they don't. Obviously, Ainsley Earhart ran into one. I'm not going to say they don't. But for them to demonize all was a major error. And I will be telling you why shortly. Major error. Major. Let me continue real quick here. Okay. I have a little bit more. So uh, Kavanaugh, uh, as of last Saturday, he was the 114th justice. He may become one day the most important justice of our lifetime. He may be the top justice. He may be in a position of the greatest power. And the reason this puzzle piece, <laughs> Miss Bikini, the reason this puzzle piece is so important, let me tell you what's at stake. Let me explain to you what's at stake. The Supreme Court is a beautiful thing. We are four to five years away from a seven to two majority. That means returning back to conservative values like our country was founded. This had nothing to do with Roe versus Wade. Okay? Having this supreme power is something you have to honor and be good stewards of just like MAGA. And by President Trump having these opportunities, there's going to be a few more opportunities coming his way. And we have to honor that. Then we're going to have a supermajority, a true supermajority in the Supreme Court, in the House, in the Senate, and in the executive branch. We are going to surround ourselves by like-minded MAGA people that are drowning out the 4,000 employees deep of the deep state. It's going to take time. As we drown them out, when decisions are made, they will be made based on the platform from the leader. That's how it works. You honor the platform. And this platform is working, folks. This platform is working on every single level. You will not understand the impact yet of the uh, regulations that were cut unless you're a business. And if you, quite, if you do understand that we struck them back to the 1960s and you're a builder or some type of manufacturer, you would get what I'm talking about. It's a really big deal, an epic big deal. All right, let's move on. I got to move on. All right. Moving on. So let's chat a little bit about my, I have a little rant first. So let me rant on this a little bit and we'll do some uh, Q&A. All right. Uh, we get a few. Let me rant on something. So Juan Williams on the five said that um, they don't have a mob mentality. We haven't been picked on. We haven't really, uh, we have nothing to complain about. Things are just fine. So this guy is going to read to you a few things that I've put together. Okay to show you what's been done to us. Hopefully we don't get frozen here. If we freeze, let me know, okay? If it freezes, let me know. Okay, here we go. I'm having an issue pulling up a picture, so hold on one second. All right, I got it, you ready? Listen to this. Listen to these apples, them apples. Here we go. Tim Kaine asked for blood on the streets. Loretta Lynch wanted bloodshed and violence against Republicans. Obama, the most dangerous leader, asked supporters to rise up. CNN announced who would take over the government if all Republicans were killed during Trump's inauguration. A New York play shows the killing of Trump. Snoop Dogg kills Trump in a video. Kathy Griffin decapitates a head. Uh, let's see. Uh, Madonna, quote, I've thought about a lot about blowing up the White House. Robert De Niro, I'd like to punch him in the face. I'm still going. I feel like it's freezing on me. Okay, next. Joss Whedon from the Avengers director, quote, I want a rhino to F Paul Ryan to death. Number 11, David Simon, creator of The Wire, quote, pick up a goddamn brick if Trump fires Robert Miller and throw it at him. All right, that's, that's, you know, that's somewhat egregious. Um, Mickey Rourke, the wrestler actor, quote, he can suck my effing D and threatens to beat Trump with a baseball bat. Leah Delario, the actress, threatens to, quote, take out Republicans and independents with a baseball bat after the Trump win. YG, the rapper, no clue who he is, threatens Trump with F Donald Trump song. Marilyn Manson, kill Trump in music video. 
Everlast the Rapper warns Trump, quote, I will punch you in your fucking face. I'm not done yet. Still going. Larry Wilmore jokes about suffocating Trump with, quote, pillow they use to kill Scalia. Stephen Colbert, never seen a show, late night show, puts Stephen Miller's head on a spike. Sarah Silverman suggests military could help overthrow Trump. Kathy Griffin also promised to beat up Baron Trump, who's 11 years old at the time. She also posted a picture of several of, of the severed head of Trump in the name of dark comedy. Juan Thompson threatens to blow up a Jewish community center. I think I'm still going. Jeremy Christian, the Portland killer and a Bernie voter, killed two people. The Huffington Post asked for Trump's execution on June 11th. Hillary Clinton tells her followers to resist. Fuller said in this article that impeachment is no longer enough and that Trump must face justice. When did such vitriol become acceptable? All right, so I gave you a few examples. I'm still not done yet. Are you ready for another example? Here's one. You may not know what actually happened here, but I'm going to tell you because that's what I do. A train carrying Republican lawmakers to a retreat crashes into a truck. Does anyone remember that story? Does anyone remember me reporting that story live when it happened? I happen to have some strategic intel. And if you don't know what happens when the president travels by train, which is not very often, or dignitaries travel by train in Europe, which is very often, <clears throat> All right. Also, when, <clears throat> when Republicans <clears throat> or Democrats travel by train, which is somewhat here and there, here's what happened. That train, as you know, crashed and someone died. It says, an Amtrak train carrying Republican lawmakers to their annual pol uh, policy retreat crashed into a large truck in rural Virginia on Wednesday, killing one of the truck's passengers. Two other passengers from the truck were injured, one seriously, one taken to a hospital. Two members of the train's crew and at least two passengers, including Representative Jason Lewis, Republican in Minnesota, were also taken to a hospital with minor injuries. The crash occurred around 11.20 a.m., 10 miles northwest of Charlottesville. By early afternoon, the train was on its way back to Charlottesville, where buses were waiting to finish the trip. Okay, does anyone know what really happened? Do you know what's supposed to happen? Do you understand what has to happen? These, uh, what happens is when dignitaries travel by train... Every single train stop that was in the day normal is shut down. It is also pre-checked. That means for any obstruction. And I spoke to somebody who had a relative that did actually that. And what their job is to do is to travel ahead of time on the track with a little train car and stop at every single stop and make sure there are no obstructions on every stop and then make sure their bars are down. This was called an on purpose. This was by no means an accident by any stretch of imagination. And I got that intel when I was live on the air. One of our people in here sent me a note, told me where they worked, said I couldn't repeat it, and told me what was actually going on and had the intel at the time. So that's pretty horrible, right? So I would consider that a target. I'm not done yet, though. I'm not done. Because Juan Williams had said nothing happened, so I'm not done yet. On June 14, 2017, in Alexandria, Virginia, Republican members of Congress and House Majority Whip Steve Scalise of Louisiana was shot while practicing for the annual congressional baseball game for charity, scheduled for the following day. Also shot were Chris, uh, Crystal Griner, a U.S. Capitol Police officer uh, assigned to protect Scalise, Zach Barth, a congressional aide, and Matt Mika, or Micah, a Tyson's food lobbyist. A 10-minute shootout ensued between the shooter, James Hodgkinson of Bellevue, Illinois, a left-wing activist, and officers from the Capitol and Alexandria Police. Officers shot Hodgkinson, who died from his wounds later that day at George Washington Hospital. Scalise and Mika were taken to nearby hospitals where they underwent surgeries. Scalise is the first sitting member of Congress to have been shot since Arizona Representative Gabriel Giffords was shot in 2011. The Virginia Attorney General concluded it was, quote, fueled by rage against Republican legislators and an act of terrorism. Hey, Juan Williams, I think I just went over about 25 things and I'm still not done yet. Let's see. We have Maxine Waters, impeach Pote Pive, Maxine Waters, suggesting and telling people to find us where we eat, where we fill up gas, where we go. 
hunt us down. We have people threatening to kick us. We have people grabbing our drink, throwing it in our face because we wear a MAGA hat. And what are we doing? You know what we're doing? Do you know what our comeback is? Do you know what our epic comeback is, guys? We fight back with something quite interesting. You know what it's called? Success. Did you hear that? Do you, do you hear it? Success. Success. We fight back with a resume of success that will be unmatched by anyone in world history in the shortest span. End of story. Nobody, not one person, ever could have accomplished this under such scrutiny. Thousand nails in President Trump's coffin. Holy moly. This is going to end him this time. Uh-oh, he said something on camera. This is going to end him this time. Uh-oh, no uh-ohs. None. What happened in Charlottesville is not the way Juan Williams tells you that happened. Don't worry about that. They've ensued and incited every single riot. These are not protests. These are called riots. You know what a riot is? When things are destroyed and trash is left behind. That's a riot. When Republicans get together at a MAGA event, let me give you an example. Um, the last rally, 20,000 people waiting outside, 12,000 people inside. The, mile, the, law, the line for the people waiting was three and a half miles long and not one MAGA person left behind trash. They all held each other in the line so you can go use the restroom. They even watched each other's purses. They even traded pieces of gum. And yet, they were the most patient people in the world. And if that line was full of people from the left, you could just rest assured there would be destruction somewhere, somehow, some way, or they would incite something. We are the most peaceful and successful group that has ever been on this earth. And it's starting to shine. So I'm turning my rant into a positive here. It's shining. And there's only one way to pay back this great man who I have a history with. It means more to me than you'll ever know. I have the tattoo. I followed him for 32 years. I tried out for The Apprentice season two. I've met the man twice. This to me is one of the biggest deals ever. I'm asking you guys to pay him back with the easiest thing you can do is your vote on November 6th. That's not all I'm asking. When you get home from voting, don't go to work that day. Celebrate. Park your car, walk over to your neighbor and ask if they voted. If they didn't vote, offer to watch their pets and their kids and get them the hell to vote. And then show up to the elderly care facility and bring tuna fish sandwiches and get them in the car and drive them to go vote because the Democrats do that. You got to flip the script on every possible thing. This vote is President Trump's insurance policy that guarantees that we get everything done. The wall, we have actually are getting more money for the wall. We've already started in two places, just finished one already. It's going to be finished. We also have it in the deal that Mexico will pay for it in the trade deal. Everything we wished and wanted, he's already gotten done or on the way to finishing with scrutiny and a thousand nails in the coffin. Hey, X-Man. Hello, Lolo. You have to agree that we owe him our vote. If you want to see a red tsunami, then become the red tsunami. If you want an epic super majority, one like you've never seen before, then just do this damn thing. Midterm elections are the least sexiest elections ever. I get it. I know it. Do me a favor. Act like President Trump's on the fucking ballot and get your ass to that voting booth. Take your kids that are eligible to vote that don't really give a shit and teach them why it's so important that this vote is the lockdown vote for a century. What we accomplish in the next six years, including 12 years of rebuilding our infrastructure, we will accomplish the most in this century that anyone's ever accomplished. It's really up to you guys and me. It's up to us. It's not up to other people. We have a gift. You know what that gift is called? That gift is called the Walk Away March. We were gifted the greatest marketing campaign of the last 20 years, and it was given to the Republican Party for free, and we didn't spend one damn dollar on it? Are you telling me that you just gave that to me? 330,000 people 
have left the, the Democrat Party to vote for President Trump and what he believes in. And we didn't pay a dollar for it. This is fantastic. This is as good as it gets. You have to agree. How many gifts do you get? How many? Do you want to spoil this moment? You don't want to spoil this moment. So get your ass to those polls. Pick up other people. Let them borrow your car. Pick up the elderly and get them there. Teach them how to vote. Do what the Democrats have done to us forever. But do me a favor. Don't fight back. Don't use vitriol. Don't antagonize online. Don't say, ha ha, we got Judge Kavanaugh. That is not being good stewards of MAGA. Be good stewards of MAGA and great things will come to you. But if you're not, you better look out because great things will not come your way. You must be great stewards of what we've created. Anyone who left the Trump train, I hate flip-floppers. I don't really like them coming back. But they see the greatness and they want back on, don't they? I see a lot that want back on the train. A ton that want back on the train. Do you want that? Do you want them back? They better honor and be good stewards of MAGA to be part of this Trump train. You know? That's right, Karen. Hello, Audrey. That's why I'm so passionate about it with my history with this man. I'm asking you to find your inner passion, find your Lindsey Graham moment, and speak out. If you can't speak out because of your jobs, I understand. I don't want you to get fired. Shame on anyone that won't let you be yourself. But if you can speak out and you live in California, then stop shutting the hell up and do something. Here's the best lesson I'll teach you right now. You were taught during the most dangerous reign of terror under Barack and St. Obama, if you see something, say something. That's a bullshit pussy way out. If you see something, do something, and then brag about it when you're done. But don't just say something. Don't be a tattletale. Brag about it later. I'll give you an example. President Trump says something. He backs it up and gets it done. And then he gets on camera and he brags about it. And so he should. You know why he brags about it? Because opposition media will never say a damn word about it. So he is his best advertiser. So when you see something, do something and brag about it later. And it's time for you guys to go do something. It's time for all of us to do something. I motivate you every morning for six hours. I motivate you to do certain things and you guys have done tremendous work. Tremendous. Thank you, Linda. Tremendous. And I'm going to tell you what tremendous is. Are you ready? I'm going to do it very quickly. Tremendous stuff that you guys accomplished. This group is partly responsible for taking down the racist hate group Black Lives Matter. They are one-tenth of what they were because of this group. This group is responsible for making thousands of calls combined to get banners taken down at city hall buildings, at churches, to fight the good fight, and to really smack back when they were threatening police officers and murdering them in their cop cars and shooting them in Texas. You guys fought back. All we did here is coordinate it. I was the mouthpiece for it, and you guys made it happen. That's what we do. You know what else we did? You guys helped save 19 lives that were all veterans, some from Vietnam where my uncle fought, and this was a big deal to me. They lived under an overpass in Arizona. They had barely any food, barely any clothes, no drugs for PTSD, and no support. And one of my Closer Nation people in here, one, stepped up to the plate and said, hey, Closer, I have a ton of land in Tucson. I can give you five acres of land to house them on, and we can get temporary housing until we can figure it out. I said, are you serious? I can give you land. You're going to give me land. You're going you're gonna to give me land, and we can give it to them? You're serious? Then we got land. And then you know what else we did? We got doctors to show up on site. They were being kicked off from under the overpass from the local police. Then we called the police, and the police got involved and actually helped us honor them. We got them moved. We got them clothing. We got them food. We got them their medication. And the police were so touched that they gave a policeman's escort. We got a limousine company to donate a limousine. We got the veterans to ride in the limo and wear, you know, beautiful clothes and go to a steak dinner. You guys did that. I was the mouthpiece for it. You guys made all these phone calls. We got donations. You guys got involved. You guys had the power to get involved. Two more quick things. When they did the play 
on the assassination of Donald Trump, and we found out about it early in the morning. I was the mouthpiece for that. And right away, I told you what was going on. I asked for a call to action, and immediately, you guys got on the phone, contacted the school. One of you contacted the local Fox affiliate. We got Fox News to show up, immediately got in their faces, and two students and a principal were suspended for doing a play on the assassination of Donald Trump. You guys helped the kid wearing the MAGA hat that got kicked out of school and suspended at nine years old. And I went online, got the manual for the school, and it said you cannot wear anything offensive. I challenged that. I made phone calls to the principal, challenged that. You guys made phone calls. None of the parents were sticking up for this shit. It took people like us to stick up for it. And within three days, that kid was back in school allowed to wear his hat. It took you guys to help right the wrongs. You guys. We have to get involved to right the wrongs. The parents aren't even doing this stuff. And last but not least, one of our biggest success stories as well is one of the most, the greatest universities out there that I hate the most. It's second to Ohio State University. It's called Michigan. And Michigan sent out an email to all students during the primary, right after President Trump was the winner, and said not to vote for President Trump in the presidential election in an email to everyone of the 41,000 students. And one of you that were students sent me a copy of the letter. And I read the letter, hello, Melissa. And when I read that letter, I was really pissed off. One, I'm from Ohio, love Ohio State, so that's something. Two, I read the letter and I said, this is a publicly funded university and they shall not be telling students what to say, what to do, how to do. So I contacted an attorney, pro bono, okay? So we didn't have to pay. And we put pressure on the chancellor and we sent letters to the chancellor. Nothing was replied. We sent a very heated letter to the chancellor saying it's going to go to court and, and you're going to have to come in the public eye with cameras and speak for yourself. It took two months. And within two months, they sent a retraction to all students saying they made a mistake. They're not allowed to steer any student of how to vote, where to vote, what to do, how to do in any form and 41,000 students got a retraction. Now, how many students voted for President Trump? I have no clue. My point is that you guys helped initiate and make that happen. I was very proud of all of you for the things that we've accomplished in the last two years and four or five months, 838 episodes worth of The Best Closer Show. And this is like episode six or seven of Closing Time. You guys, hey, Ann, you guys did so much to engage and get involved where parents failed and you didn't even know these people. You guys are awesome. Give it up for yourselves. Okay, that's enough. Don't wallow in it. Don't get a big head over it. Stop it already. That's ridiculous. Well, Ohio State's the largest university in the world, the largest all brass band and the damn good football team. Uh, but anyway, don't get a big head over it. Now I'm asking you, to channel. I just went over the Florida vote before you came in, Victor, uh, and I could try to do it again, but I'm running short on time. Now I'm asking you to challenge all this. Hey, thank you, Miss Pearl. I'm asking you to channel all that same energy of all the same requests I've ever given. I've given a lot of requests. I've done a lot of call to actions. Are you not listening to me? Is this thing on? Are you guys not listening? I don't, I don't feel you're listening. I need to get attention. Better get your attention real quick. I feel like you're not listening. I feel like you're not listening. Are you not? Are you listening now? Did I get your attention? Holy crap. I had to get your attention. I had to do it. I'm asking you to channel all of your energy and all of your thoughts. President Trump has taken thousands of nails in his coffin. If you thought I had death threats and had to move out of my house and be threatened by people and they did stuff to my family, President Trump got what I got on a daily basis 10 times over, maybe more. He's done a lot for us. I'm asking you to take all of that same energy and everything you did to help me and yourselves and help these people we didn't even know and fight Black Lives Matter and all that stuff we did and channel that energy into the greatest vote in human history. It is your job to be great stewards of MAGA, and I'm asking you to prove it on November 6th. Do I have your attention? Do I have your commitment to prove it on November 6th? I think I got some attention. 
This is good. This is like my motivational speeches I used to do. This is feeling pretty good. This is what I did for a while. This is why I traveled so often. Yes, that's great, Lisa. That's awesome news. I'm really proud of you guys. But don't get, don't get, uh, don't rest on your laurels. This is truly important. I know I made fun of it, but this is the most important thing. Hope will not get you out of this. You can't hope we're going to win. I have a winner's mentality. I know I'm going to win. I was the most steadfast and resolute person for this man. And you guys used to send me notes like, oh, I don't think he's going to win. I think he blew it on the microphone tonight. Oh, he didn't win the debate. I have emails from you guys that are well over 8,000 emails. I have those saved. I also have a lot of hate mail. I have those saved too. And I have your emails panicking. This guy does not can. Thank you, Dr. Tony. This guy does not panic. I know for a fact that the red tsunami is here. Will we have the umph behind it to take us to the hoop and dunk it? According to what I'm reading, according to the newest update, and this is the update I'm going to give you, this is what has changed in 24 hours. 24 hours ago, the Democrats had locked down 209 seats, and the Republicans had 189, and there were 32 up for grabs. Now the Democrats in 24 hours, since the Kavanaugh polls were uh, reflected and uh, re, uh, you know, mathematically included into these numbers, we are now at 204 Democrats, 199 Republicans, 32 at large. The tide is turning quickly, and these polls are about 85% correct, which tells me we're probably about the same right now. That tells me that their shot of winning the House went from what was 80% a few months ago, 75% a few weeks ago is probably no more than like a 50-50 shot at this point. You know? Yes, that's fantastic, Ann. That's, that's beautiful. Now it's up to us. We have the easiest but the most important job ever. That's all we have is to make that the most important day. You're going to hold your nose and you're going to vote for Republicans you don't like, that you don't appreciate, you don't like their game, but if you don't do it, we lose. So hold your nose and vote for the ones you don't like and cheer the ones you love. But this is the time you got to get it done. I don't like the Republican Party that much. I've been part of it my whole life. I'm part of America's party or the party of Trump. And I'm going to make sure this man gets his platform completed in two terms. That's why I'm here. I promise to do this all the way through. And I told you, I even got the tattoo live on the air and I'll get the next tattoo live on the air for you guys. I keep my promises. Now it's up to you guys. So I'm just about ready to start ending the show here. It sounds like I've motivated you to take it to the hoop, which is great. I hear sec uh, the security clearance is lost for uh, Hillary. That's fantastic. Uh, right now, there's not really good stat places. You can go to realclearpolitics.com, but they're not the best. They're about as good as they're going to get where they take all the polls and then they divide them out and they factor in one number. Uh, they're not by far the best, but uh, they're, they're okay. They're not fantastic. That's awesome news, Ann. Awesome news. Cheryl Mills and Hillary Clinton lost security clearance. That is great news. That was a fast hour, Jamie Lee. I had a lot to say. So here's what I give you each week. You know, uh, Closers Angels gives you a ton of hours during the week of their time and effort, and I do the same. And combined, we're putting in a couple hundred hours in a week combined just to bring you the news. And a lot of the news I gave you was before you heard it. You didn't hear about the judges from anyone else but this guy. So there's a lot of things you didn't know. You didn't hear about the market, what was going to change in the market, except from this guy. So certain things you get ahead of time, certain things you get after the fact. But we do our best. Stay ahead of the action. You also got the Las Vegas story I gave you and you got the true Benghazi story. And that's something I hold dear to my heart because we have to honor what happened there. Thank you, John. You guys are the best. So I would like to do each show where we do the news. I do a rant and we do Q&A, but I used up my Q&A today in, a, in a, a motivational moment. So I did a MAGA moment for you guys. I did one of these. I gave you a bit of a MAGA moment real quick. I did it one-on-one -on -one with myself and you guys. But I had your attention. I think I got your attention. I really do. So tonight, Closers Angels has a special episode tonight. Uh, they're going to be broadcasting the epic rally. We have two rallies back-to-back -back and many more to come. And tonight, uh, I told you we had uh, Lebanon, Ohio. And Saturday, we have Richmond, Kentucky. 
So thank you, ditto. Great seeing you. There's some of you that are ill and out there not doing so well, so you have our thoughts and prayers. Some of you are getting better, I've heard. Congratulations. Some of you are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Send me a note to closermike at yahoo.com the night before, and I will get it on the air and celebrate your moment for you. All right? Thank you, Dr. Tony. It was my pleasure. Thank you guys for the super hearts and an awesome week. And I promise you this, I'm going to be jumping in with little episodes here and there to surprise you. And I may not even tell you the time. And when it comes to election day, both Closers Angels and myself, we will be broadcasting probably through a 24-hour cycle. So I'll be on the air a lot too. And we're here to bring you the latest and greatest like I did on the famous election eve. And uh, I broadcasted for almost uh, 48 or 50 hours with a couple breaks. So I promise to do a lot. All right. If you guys are meeting up at the rallies, which some of you have, thank you, Closer Nation. Some of you have made friends with each other, held signs up to meet each other, and I'm super proud to hear all the things that happened. So thank you, guys. You're welcome, deplorable wench. Thank you, Greg. So no, it's not Taminator. It probably is one day. I know that, Taminator. All right. Thank you, X-Man. What a great week we had. I want to also say this. When Anne-Marie Waters is on, I had an influx of people from the UK, and I got to tell you, they need our help. Over 700 new followers from the UK in a 48-hour period, and I'm damn proud of that interview, and I'm even more proud of the new people that I have watching this show. So I want to welcome all the UK people. We have a ton from Australia, uh, a great deal from New Zealand, a bunch from Sweden. I thank you all from around the world, especially the US. They all are jealous of us. But don't be jealous yet. We got to lock down this vote. Then you could be damn jealous and we'll help you out one day in return. How's that sound? So love you back, Sherry. There you go, Taminator. All right, everyone. So I have to get going. I'm not going to play the music on the way out. Just my intro and outro. No extra graphics and fun stuff on uh, closing time. I hope you had a great time on closing time. I did. Thank you, Andy Joe. Thank you guys for the super hearts. I saw the comments. I'm very happy. I don't watch the replays, guys. I, I don't watch my own replays. You know why? I can't stand it. I don't like to watch them at all whatsoever. Get out there and vote like you never voted before. All right. Thank you very much. Welcome, newcomers. I like that. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Victor. Yes, I'm supporting Amy. I'll give you updates on Amy. We're talking on Sunday, and I hope to have an update for you on Monday of some sort about Amy. But she's standing strong, and we stand by Amy for sure. Thank you, Grandma. Harper, thank you very much. Lynette, good seeing you. Miss T Bikini, Melissa, Cherry, multiple Melissas in here, multiple Karens. Thank you, Laura. No, I'm not playing that one. I played that earlier today. I'm just doing my intro and outro today. But thank you. I try not to add to graphics. Thank you, Beck. Thank you, Sherry. KABC, you sound like a news station there. Thank you, Linda. It's Friday night. Go out there and be safe. Don't drink and drive. If you are getting a new pet, don't buy it. Adopt, don't shop. That's the best thing you can do. Save a life. Save a pet's life. Adopt. All right? Everyone have a beautiful evening. Enjoy the rally tonight. And I will see you bright and early on Monday unless there's breaking news. And I'm sure I'll be able to jump on somewhere in between. Okay? Thank you, guys. All right? Have a great weekend. I'm out. I will. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. I, I will tell Amy. Thank you, Princess Di. I will tell Amy. You all say hello. Thank you, Teresa. Yes, the Melania Trump interview is tonight on 2020. Thank you, Marsha. Hey, Sour Amy. Thanks for coming in. Not so sour. My pleasure. Arizona is my home. Good seeing you, Lisa. Bye, Miss Pearl. Carpe Diem, Sherry. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you, Sherry. Melissa. See, multiple Melissa. Rachel, good seeing you. Have a beautiful weekend. Long time no see. Thank you, Beth. I had a great time with you all. I saw those super hearts. I'm very appreciative. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining Patreon, too. Thank you. Shout out to Sylvia for joining Patreon during the show. Thank you, Sylvia. Much love to all of you.
Hey, John, are you still in there? Is my friend John still out there? Thank you, Audrey. Are you still in the room, John? If you're still in the room, say hello, John. John R., say hello. Army John. If you're out there, Army John, say hello. Give a, give a thumbs up if you're there. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Melissa. The fastest hour on Periscope. There's a lot in there. Thank you, Fritz If Army John's in the room, let me know. Say hello, Army John, before I log off. There he is. Do me a favor, guys. Before I leave, my friend John's celebrating a birthday tomorrow. So while I interrupt the end of the show real quick, give a happy birthday to my friend John. Let's give it up for John. Happy birthday to John. Happy birthday to John. Happy birthday to my friend John. Happy birthday to you and thank you for your service my friend and many more happy and healthy birthdays to you able to fit that in last minute. My pleasure, John. Thanks for joining the show. I have like five cherries, one cherry, and a cherie, and it makes it difficult when all of you come in the room. Thank you all. Have a beautiful weekend. Be safe for me, okay? Motivation galore. Friday motivation. No problem. The replay will be available in two minutes, folks. Thanks for the super hearts. Have a great birthday, John. Much love to everybody. Cherry. Thank you, Karen. Say goodnight to Bucky. I do not know when it's on. I never watch TV on time, ditto. I tape everything. Yes, I'm very challenged on that one. Thank you, X-Man. Thank you, Gus. It's morning time down under. Find it fast, Greg. Real fast. Replay will be available. Have a beautiful weekend. See you on Monday. Enjoy Clothes and Angels.